This cassette tape was produced in the studios of Back to the Bible. The messages you are about to hear were first given on our daily radio broadcast during the 50th anniversary week of Back to the Bible's ministry. Theodore Epp is the speaker, and one message on Daniel. And now with your Bibles open to the book of Daniel, we continue our lesson study there. Today we want to study, uh, take a short look at the character of this man whom God used to write this book and to give us the foresights that are to come. And we'll take up the prophecy at a later time. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for thy precious word again today, that thou hast made sure and hast uh, established the fact that thou art in control of all things. You want to be in control of our lives too. And so from the life of Daniel, may we learn some basic facts for our life, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The secret of this man's life is found in the 8th verse. He purposed in his heart. God speaks of him as a greatly beloved person. Three times at least he mentions that in the, the book of Daniel. And his own enemies speak of him as being one that is faithful and blameless. They were trying to find a fault, and they says, we'll not find it. He's faithful. We'll not find it. He's blameless. We'll have to make a law that's contradictory to his beliefs, and then possibly we'll find something. Well, the outstanding element of his character was his moral courage. He had courage to stand, to stand for that which was right. Now, just put yourself in his place for a moment. We have such, oh, the situation so completely different than he did. Here he was in Babylon, a slave, captive. There were no temple worship there, no place where they could gather in that manner, no Sabbath observances, uh, very few Old Testament scriptures, if any, to read. Well, yes, he possibly read Jeremiah and a few. He had those. No other aids to devotion or devotional books of any kind. Yet he remained utterly true to God under the most unfavorable circumstances. Well, this moral courage was demonstrated on four different occasions. I want to just take a moment to look at them. First of all, in his early teens, some think he was a possibly 14 years of age when he was brought before the king. Remember, he was a captive. Remember, he was a slave. Remember, he was one of the household of Israel. Now, when it came to the time when they were to be assigned their portions to eat, and these portions that they were to eat were things that the king especially wanted, including liquor and so on. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And so, being in a heathen religion, then he, the meat was consecrated to uh, heathen gods and so on, and it was improper for a devout Jew to eat this type of meat. Uh, he would not defile himself, it says. He would not dishonor God. He would not deny his faith. So Daniel purposed in his heart. This, I say again, is the key to his character and to his great achievements. It was not just a purpose here, just because of eating. That was just the one thing, but he was that type of a man. He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. He met and defeated his temptation right at the very beginning. This is the thing that is so utterly important. Do it right away. Remember what James says concerning sin. I want to read from the first chapter, verse 14 and 15. He says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust and enticed. Every man is tempted. Now, even Daniel was tempted. But now when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. There you see the progression of sin. You remember Eve in the garden? She saw. She desired. She took. She ate. She gave to her husband. You remember Achan during the time of uh, Joshua? 
And when he stole that which he was not supposed to take, it says he saw, he took, and he hid. Well, first of all, of course, he desired. He saw, he desired, he took, and he hid that. Remember Lot? Abraham gave him a chance to choose which land, which where he would go. He looked down at the populated cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. He looked down at the great valleys down there. He says, that's where I want to go. He did not clinch or did not stop the temptation right at the very beginning. Well, this laid the foundation for his great and granite character. And, of course, God responded to this faithfulness by giving him favor with the officer in charge right away. Notice verse 9. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Well, you say, if that's the case, then it's easy for a man to do that. But wait a minute. On what basis did God do that? In Proverbs 16, verse 7, we read, When a man's, man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. God maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. When? When a man's ways please the Lord. That is the prerequisite. This man passed the test. Then another occasion, this happens in the second chapter of the uh, book, uh, when uh, uh, the king uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and he had forgotten what the dream was. He called all of his wise men together, as you may recall, as you've read the story, I hope you have, and uh, asked them to tell him what the dream was, and then to tell him uh, what the dream meant. Well, there wasn't a wise man that could do it. And they, they said to him, why, you're asking the impossible, the idea that we would be able to tell you what your dream was. And furthermore, uh, the interpretation, simply because we don't know what the dream was. Well, the king became very furious, I read in verse 12 of the second chapter. And this cause, the king was angry and very, very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought for Daniel and for his fellows that they should be slain. Now this was the setting. This was the condition. The dream had been forgotten. The wise men could not uh, tell what it was. They would, so all the wise men were to be slain. This included Daniel and, the, and his friends. Well, at this particular time, Daniel became very, very courageous. Now, to go into the presence of a king in this type of an attitude, uh, of course, was dangerous to his head, but he did go. It says in verse 14, Then Daniel answered and said, What's the hurry? Why all of this? And he says, I'm going to go and ask him for time. The God of heaven can tell what this is. Uh, nobody else can, but the God of heaven can. So we note that several things he did. He called for a prayer meeting, and he sought God's face, uh, for the dream and for its interpretation. You know what the Lord says in Psalm 37, 4? There's a beautiful illustration of this verse. The verse says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now, he did not say, What are your desires? And if, the, if, you'll, if you will ask of the Lord, he'll give them to you if you delight yourself in the Lord. No, he says, the first prerequisite is that delight yourself in the Lord. And here is an illustration this was his reward. He delighted to do what God wanted him to do. So Daniel, in spite of all of the troubles and trials that were before him, asks the king, goes into his presence, and asks for time. I want you to note, this especially struck me, uh, note uh, about uh, the word then, T-H-E-M, the sequence, as Daniel follows on through. The word then is used five times in that many different verses. In verse 14, it says, Then, then what? Then he went to his master, his, his uh, immediate master, uh, and asked him, he says, What's all the hurry about? Why does he want to slay them? He doesn't give us a chance. What's all the hurry about? Then, then after that, he went into the king's presence, and he says, Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give them time and that he would show the king the interpretation. This is something. Imagine Daniel saying, no, and didn't say with the rest of the wise men, no, we can't, that, that you're asking the impossible. He says, King, if you'll give me time, I'll find out what your dream is, 
and I will give you the interpretation thereof. For I've got, there's a God in heaven who will do this. And of course, the king grants it. So then, the, then comes the third then. Then Daniel went to his house and made the things known to his friends or his companions, and they desired the mercies of God of heaven concerning this. Then he called for a prayer meeting. So first of all, you notice, he asked, what's the hurry? Then he went to the king to ask for time. Then he went to his house to call for a prayer meeting. Then, verse 19, was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. And then the fifth then, then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. So then the secret was revealed, and then he praised God. This is a proper order to follow. Find out what all the problems are, and uh, take courage to uh, follow through, and then ask the Lord about it. Go to the Lord, and when God gives it, then go to the king. But first, before you all do that, praise the Lord. This was Daniel's way. Well, then we find that after this, Daniel worshipped God. And in it, there's a sevenfold declaration of how uh, he worshipped God. And I want you to note this. Beginning with verse uh, 20, it tells us this. For wisdom and might are his. He answered and he blessed the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. In uh, the Lord's Prayer we say, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. That's exactly the way he felt. And then secondly, he said in verse 21, it is he that changeth times and seasons. This is how he worships God. He first of all says, God, you're the God of wisdom. You're the God of might. You're the God that changeth times and seasons. You can, there's nothing that you cannot do. In Acts 1, verse 7, the disciples asked Jesus Christ when the kingdom was to be set up, and Jesus answered him, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons. These are in the hands of God. And Daniel acknowledges that. Then thirdly, Daniel, he says, he is the one, God is the one that removeth kings and setteth them up. And so he recognizes the greatness of an almighty God who sets up kingdoms. And lo, this verse, uh, Isaiah, the 40th chapter, beginning with verse 13, where he says, Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor hath taught him? With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him? Verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop in the bucket, and are counted as a small dust of the balances. Verse 17. All the nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted uh, to uh, him less than nothing and vanity. To whom then uh, will he liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? So he acknowledges the greatness and the almightiness of a wonderful, wonderful God. In Isaiah 46, uh, verse 9, uh, we read this. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, says God. There is none else. I am God. There is none like unto me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things which are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. I have spoken it, uh, yea, I will bring it to pass. I have purposed it, I will also do it. This is what Daniel acknowledges concerning an almighty God. Then fourthly, it says it is he that giveth wisdom, in verse 21. God is the one that gives wisdom. So yes, in fact, in 1 Corinthians 1, 30, we are told that he is our wisdom. In Proverbs 2, verse 6, he is the source of all wisdom. Then, fifthly, he says, He revealeth the deep and secret things of God. For instance, God revealed to us in the tenth chapter of Genesis the beginning of the place called Babel or Babylon. But in the Revelation, the seventeenth chapter, he gives us the picture of what's going to happen to Babylon and how it's going to be destroyed. In verse 22, he says in the sixth place, He knoweth what is in the darkness. In other words, he knows about the darkness of the souls of men. He knows all about darkness. And then in the 22nd verse, he, the seventh place, he says, but light dwelleth with him. He is the light of the world. And they that must come to him must come to the light. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. 
Now, this is the way Daniel worshipped God. Read that second chapter and mark it for yourself and in your heart, and you will find a tremendous, wonderful way to worship an almighty God. You are now at the end of this series of messages by Theodore Epp, the founding director of Back to the Bible, and I would remind you that we have other cassettes available by him and other speakers like Pastor Warren Wiersbe. For further information about these cassettes, write and ask for a brochure describing all of our material on cassette.